Hello everybody! In this video I'm going to be comparing the Corsair H115i all-in-one liquid cooler versus the Noctua NHD15 dual tower air cooler. I'm not a professional reviewer by any means, I just happen to have both of these coolers because I initially had the Noctua NHD15 on my i7700K when I first got it. When I first overclocked the CPU I noticed that there were some huge temperature issues uh, to the point where I couldn't maintain a 5.0 gigahertz clock speed without thermal throttling. This was fairly early in the release of the 7700K and when I first saw these temperature issues I thought that perhaps the NHD15 was not powerful enough for cooling and so I went out and bought a H115i. Uh, the temperatures were slightly better but in no way was this a drastic change. Um, and then that's when I started to notice that temperature issues were common with the 7700K. I eventually delitted my CPU and swapped the stock thermal insulating material with Cool Laboratory Liquid Metal Ultra. This did cause about a 20 to 25 degree difference under load, and I went on happily for several months with the H115i until a couple of days ago where the pump died. This caused a huge spike in liquid and CPU temperatures. So I thought if anything I would go back to the NHD15 uh, to hopefully hold me off until I could get another cooler or just to do some additional testing. Today I tested and recorded my temperatures for the NHD15 so there is a several month gap between when I initially tested with the H115i temps. However the ambient room temperature is roughly about the same. This should also show that there is no temperature creep up after applying the liquid metal. So, sorry for rambling here, I just wanted to address some things beforehand. Here are my results. I have the NHD15 in the yellowish color and the H115i in the blue color. For each test, I did a reading for the highest temperature, the average temperature, and the lowest temperature. The test name lines up with the lowest temperature. So you can see my first test was done using Prime95 version 26.6. And the specific reason for why I use this version is later versions of Prime95 will push the TDP, so the thermal design power, above 120%, which causes some unrealistically high temperatures, whereas the older versions of Prime do not do this. At least that's my understanding of it anyways. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. However, the results are a lot more consistent with the other benching tests I've done. I also used IDA64, which does actually push the TDP above 120% during FPU testing, but for a much shorter duration. This is why we see higher temperature results as for the IDA testing. I also used ASUS RealBench and Cinebench R15. As you can see, based on the results, there really isn't much difference within up to at most 4 degrees. That being said, the Noctua NHD15 did come ahead slightly where it was actually a degree or two cooler in most cases. There were some instances here where they actually performed the same. So as far as cooling power goes, they are more or less the same. The other comparisons are more so in the factor and the product themselves. The Corsair H115i comes with two SP 140 millimeter fans and each fan can go up to 2000 RPM plus or minus, I think it's 5 or 10%, I can't remember, but I know when I had mine it went above 2000 RPM, and the max noise level is recorded at 40 decibels. I don't have an efficient way of reading this, so this is just what's on the product website. On Amazon right now, the Corsair H115i is going for approximately 137 US dollars, and I found the pros to be that it's a great it does have great cooling performance. It has RGB lighting on the cooling block if that's something you're into. It does take up less space in the case. You just need enough room to be able to mount a 280 millimeter radiator. And the hoses are a little bit stiff, so you also need the space to be able to move the hoses inside the case without bending or kinking them too much. Uh, the cons were that it's definitely noisier than the NHD15. Uh, there's the possibility for the pump to fail, which is what happened to me, and this will result in CPU overheating and potential damage. Uh, it is a liquid cooler, so there's also the possibility that it could leak, but I don't really want to say that that is likely because I'm not too sure with new AIOs if that's as much of a problem as it used to be. And it's a little bit more expensive than the NHD15. The Noctua NHD15 comes with two NFA15 fans. They only run at about 1500 RPM and the max uh, noise reading was 24.6 decibels. Again, that's from the Noctua website. 
Right now, this cooler is going for about 89 US dollars on Amazon. Uh, I would say that the pros with this are it is definitely quieter. I can barely hear it. Even when it's at load, it is noticeable, but it's definitely not annoying. From the testing I did, it did actually win with being a few degrees cooler in most cases. Uh, one huge thing was that Noctua used to only come with uh, those brown colored fans. Now they give you the option to customize the heat tower and the fan uh, with the Chromax products, which is actually what I have the Chromax plates on my heat towers. And you can also get black fans with different color grommets for the coolers. I think this is probably one of the best implementations of customization for air-based coolers that I've ever seen. Unless both fans fail at the same time, there's less chance for your CPU overheating due to cooler failure. The NHD15 is also currently cheaper than the H150i by about 50 US dollars. However, the price does go up if you start adding in things like the Chromax customization options. I would say that the cons are that this cooler does require a large case. It takes up more space than the H115i and it can interfere with RAM that has high heat spreaders. However, in most cases, this can be worked around. As you can see in mine, I currently have the fans on the back of the heat towers pulling the air through the cooler. This definitely leaves enough room for most RAM that I can think of. You can also mount the cooler so that it is blowing air from the bottom up out the top of the case, and that can also accompany some of the larger RAM cards. I would have to say overall that the Noctua NHD15 probably won this. The cooling performance between these two coolers was probably about the same, but the Noctua did perform slightly better, is definitely way quieter. And outside of fan failure, there's nothing really that can go wrong with this cooler. As I said at the beginning of the video, I did notice better performance with the H159 prior to deleting, deleting my CPU. After deleting, the performance between these two coolers was more or less the same. That being said, that was also early on with the release of the 7700K as well as my current motherboard, which changes to both of these with BIOS versions and hardware releases can factor into better performance and better temperatures overall. I hope this video was helpful for you if you're deciding between one of these two coolers, especially with the 7700K. If you have any comments, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching.